told Hubert to clear very carefully what he said in New York uh, mm -hmm. with you. He I, did. Well, I see he's got a good deal of negotiation in it. No, I don't think so. That's not the way I read it. But I, I, what text are you working from? I'm just reading the reports on it uh, in uh, uh, one of the papers. Uh, uh, it certainly wasn't supposed to be, Mr. President. And the he way ought they to, and I, I don't want anybody. I don't want anybody while I'm president to talking about it until we have some indication that some of them might be willing to. That's the first essential of a negotiation, man. Uh, you, it's all no, no. Uh, his remarks are obviously had been cleared in advance with President Johnson. Thus, it signals an American diplomatic offensive. What paper are you in? Uh, I'm reading from Baltimore Sun in a new direction in which the Kremlin has expressed advance agreement in general terms. No, but this is uh, the nuclear wait, thing, wait, wait, wait a minute, President. wait a minute now, wait a minute. Uh, uh, this is the nuclear He indicated thing. the United States would be very glad to leave the defense of South Vietnam and similar areas to the United Nations peacekeeping force, if such a force equal to his job. His wide-ranging speech was prepared for the conference and so forth. Let's see. The intention of the government to pursue every reasonable avenue toward agreement and limiting no wait a minute, made it clear you had no thing, no uh, that the explosion with the explosion Chinese device. stated the American commitment to South Vietnam, almost in the President's words, and sandwiched this restatement, but and sandwiched this restatement between points in his discussion of the United Nations peacekeeping machinery. This machinery should be ready to head off conflicts by conciliation and in extremism by placing whatever kind of peacekeeping force is needed in a position between antagonists so that no sovereignty is without potential international protection. No nation may call upon other nations to help protect them. Today, he acknowledged we recognize this is not possible. He complimented the United Nations their willingness to maintain peacekeeping forces and pledged to continue the American support. We have no desire we shall honor our commitment, but the space do occur. And if hostilities are to be ended, the peace must be preserved. There must be some outside force available. There is and one then, sentence there he didn't clear with me. In many cases, though, not at all. Uh, I would just as soon, just as soon, his stay out of the peacekeeping and negotiating field at this ticklish well, point. So let's just watch him very carefully. I told him the other day. I said, you're really the last man to uh, to get into the atomic field because he's pretty. He's regarded as pretty liberal, yeah. and if I were you, uh, I'd try to stay on some of these uh, subjects that you're dealing with and not get into negotiating. I just really, uh, I feel very deeply yeah. that uh, we, uh, uh, God, I'm, I want to negotiate more than any man in the world. I'll yeah. guarantee you that. I'll bet. But I don't think negotiation, my wanting to negotiate, is necessarily the best way to win the girl. Exactly. And uh, so let's uh, be awfully careful with everybody on them, and I'm going to tell them to clear things with you and Bill uh, on uh, these various programs that they're yeah. speaking on. Yeah. I, 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 I think Humphrey, in fact, stayed within the lines of policy, but your point is that when he says it, it's doubly sensitive, and I think that's absolutely right. I, there's one sentence there that I didn't get a quack at that I would not have put in, but it's not on negotiation. He shouldn't talk about American troops in explosive local disputes. That's... Uh, that connects it up to wrong way. It's not just a local dispute. Well, let's uh, let's watch the negotiation thing pretty yep. generally by all of them. Yep. Better tell Bill that because well, he's liable to give out an interview with somebody. Yep. And let's see that yep. that we all write it this time. All right. Did you hear our discussion on negotiation yesterday? Uh, with Ike? No, I didn't. I'll, I'm going to. Well, get he a... said that for a year and a half we had been negotiating out there mm -hmm. on Korea. Mm -hmm. He said that. Uh, now, this is from his viewpoint, and yeah. we don't take this. I just want to give you, though, the discussion, yeah. which I thought was... Uh, he said when he came in, uh, they came running to him and wanted, wanted to continue the negotiations. And he said, well, that's fine. I'd like to settle it. I said I was going to Korea, and I want to do anything I can for him. So he said he got a hold of uh, India. I don't know how he got a hold of him. He didn't say, but he said he told Nehru. 
that uh, he was a peace-loving man. And he knew he was. The only way he saw that he could bring peace to the world and stop this fighting and this slaughtering that had already cost us 138,000 casualties was to uh, eliminate any sanctuaries. And he wanted him to know that uh, there was not going to be anything that was off bounds, off limits. That everything there was going to be uh, war. If it's going to be war, it's going to be war. And that uh, when he was sent to Europe, that he had only one sentence of instruction, destroy the German nation. And he said he never got any other instruction. They left it up to him, and they talked about plans. But that was the extent of his instruction. He said centralization is the product of fear. And we centralized too much here. So we ought to tell these guys to... He's kind of like Goldwater going, win the war. Now uh, that, uh, I'm just pointing that out yeah. as we go along. But he says, I want you to know that I'm instructing our commanders that nothing is off limits. There are no more sanctuaries. So second, we've been making all kinds of instruments for a good many years, implements of war. So there's no use of making them if you don't use them. There's no better time to use them than when you've lost 138,000 men. And I want you to know that uh, there are not going to be any more restrictions. And the restrictions that Mr. Truman and Mr. Atchison got on the use of weapons is hereby removed. And the sanctuaries are hereby included. And he said, I figured it would take about a week for Christian Menon to get that straight to him. Mm -hmm. And he said, in about three days, uh, uh, Lee, without my knowledge or consent, pulled a rug out from under me and released 25,000 prisoners. And said, I thought that meant everything was gone. But said, they were so anxious to avoid what could have been that I had not decided it would have been, but could have been. But they came right in and said, please sign right here, right quick. Now, he said, you must not say so because that sounds like you're rattling. But uh, you must uh, not get into the word negotiation or mention it. And I just could not agree with you more, he said, because there are two elements that are requisite to a successful negotiation with the communists in my judgment, said I know some of your people won't agree with. But the first is they must be willing to negotiate. So there's no reason in the world why they should want to negotiate in South Vietnam. They've got it won. They're going to take it over. Uh, they're sitting on top of the world. They've got you on the run. They've got your own people telling you to and everything else. And so there's no real uh, reason until you heat things up for them a little bit. And you've got to get them in the humor and negotiate to do it. That's the first reason. He said, uh, the second, you must have something that's self-enforcing. He said, I don't know what you can do in the self-enforcing agreement but said, if you look at the agreements that they've made since even World War II, uh, you'll find very few that they've kept. He said, they don't, they don't feel that they have an obligation to keep an agreement. Uh, they don't look upon it as we do. So try to find something that's self-enforcing. Uh, I thought both of them were worthy of our attention. And they, 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 anyway, a man likes to hear what he said himself. And I feel that way right now because I don't believe that uh, I don't believe that Goldwater is much position to negotiate with me. I don't think I really have to listen to him much. I think I'd be courteous, but I would. Uh, I don't think I would make many concessions to what he had to do. I think he's got a few men on the hill that I might. Uh, I might spend 15, 20 minutes with him, and I think they look upon us about the same way. I may be wrong. But no, that's where right. I feel. There's a dispatch in from uh, Hanoi this morning from the Canadian on the North Vietnamese point of view. Uh, they're making the condition that they'll negotiate it after we withdraw from the South. This inflexibility characterizes present position of regime, illustrates measure of its confidence, considers it holds all Trump cards, world opinion sympathetic, effectiveness of U.S. retaliation limited, order in South steadily crumbling, prospect of private deal between Hanoi and Saigon is growing. We, they, they think they're winning. Now, this is partly for show, but it's partly real. Now, I think you ought to set up today, I think we're really not doing our homework, we ought to set up today some way for us, for you, to try to sit down with, uh, with McGovern, who's supposed to be an administration man.
but somebody else sit down with Goodwin who's taking his cues from uh, from church. And neither one of them really fought in many wars, and neither one of them are, uh, are really uh, outstanding experts in this field. But they ought to be told the other side so they can know that the thing that hurts us most is uh, is not the hitting our compound or blowing up our hotels. These goddamn speeches that the communists blow up and that show that we're about to pull out that frightens these people into changing governments all time. And that they just got to quit frightening them and they, they can think what they want to and say what they want to. But when they do, you want them to know that, there's, that they're injuring a hell of a lot of people. Now, somebody ought to tell them that quietly and carefully and I would just have them We're both down. have a meeting with Hubert to talk with him as soon as he gets back, and I'll get out. Well, Hubert just talks and keeps the balls in the air and jumps around. You have to set a specific meeting, and I'd I'll ask him to your office at 2.15 or some specific time, okay. and I'd have an agenda, and I'd have my points written out just like I did at the Security Council. And I'd say, now, we do not want to express uh, any criticism. Or we're not here to lecture. We do want to make available to you, in great confidence, the other side of this picture. I have just returned in the President's judgment, in the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and mine. The most, uh, uh, the, one of the biggest problems we have is stability in government. We've had nine of them. And the thing that causes them to just pee in their pants is to read a speech by Morris saying we're going to pull out. We ought to run out. Or Mansfield, are you? and then get into it that way and let them know that there's no greater disservice they can render. Then if they want to do it, then they're on their own. They can be a, a Bora that says that he knows more about it than the Secretary of State and that he has better information. And just quote that to him. Just say, now, Bora said he had better information than the President, Secretary of State. Maybe you all got better sources. But these are our sources, and the President wants you to be trusted with them because he sees no reason why you... He wants peace more than you do. He wants to negotiate more than you do. He's the poor bastard that keeps, stays awake every night on these things. He's the guy that sends these men to die. But he doesn't know how he can uh, uh, negotiate with a fellow that doesn't want to negotiate. And he doesn't think he'd go out to Phoenix to negotiate much with Mr. Goldwater. And he doesn't think they're going to want to come much to negotiate with us because uh, they're in his position. They've been the victor, and they've been winning, and they've got nine government, so forth. Mm-hmm. We'll do it. And make you know, attend your meeting. Now. He can yeah. do it. He's furnished a lot of funds and stuff. Yeah. But he, he's supposed to go see these folks, and he talks to them in the hall, and he gives them one line. But they've got to see the cables. you they, you got yeah. to show them that Canadian thing right yeah. there. Yeah. Any other news from out there that's worthy? Uh, it's quiet. The actual uh, body count in the last couple of days is favorable. The VC have not done anything violent. Khan is in a great hurry to... Uh, go bombing. We had to hold him off today. He wanted to bomb a bridge that whole Kimin is supposed to be dedicating tomorrow. Uh, the secretary is engaged in trying to develop a quite different way of handling the diplomatic side of this, uh, which is to uh, uh, report our side of the thing and our view of it to the co-chairman, the, well, the British and the Soviets. Uh, there's some disadvantage in going into the UN. Bhutan himself has recommended to Stevenson against the Security Council as a place for us to make our case because he says that'll just make the Russians act as lawyers for the defense. Well, then, for God's sake, so please, try try Steve, please try to get Steve. Please try to get Steve. Please say so. That's right. right. And quit going around here saying, "Well, I thought all along no, I'll be I negotiating." Know I know it, Mr. President. Did you see my memo on Lippman? Yeah. He's yeah. as far aboard as he'll come, which isn't very far. No, but I, I don't believe that a fellow like Lippman, he understands that they came across the line and just from the other side and fired our compound and he would want us to uh, say thank you. No, I think he he's doesn't. bound to think we ought to chase him off. He hates force and he does need, I, he, I had quite a fight with him on that, just that point actually, I don't think I put it in the memo. He said, you've got to remember this is not Korea, these people have not come across the line and I said, but they have. That's just the problem, that they have come across the line. I'd show him the staging area and show him the game. Well, just we, say they hit our bird. He admits that that happened, but he thinks that there's, the South has no support and the government has no strength. It's all the stuff that's in his column this morning, which he'd already written. Uh, but I don't think his broadcast will be bad. Do you have any sense of whether you're going to want to talk in or near this topic on Monday, or haven't you made up your mind yet? Uh, this is when you go to Kentucky. No, I haven't made up my mind. I think not much more than I did yesterday. I thought that one came uh, out very well yesterday. I think that... Uh, you see the Tribune editorial? No. 
says you've said exactly the right amount. Anybody who wants you to say more is simply really saying they want you to say something different. It's aimed at the times. Uh, I don't 